everybody. I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net, and I'm joined again by Al Vickham Hello. <laughs> from the Total War Warhammer team at Creative Assembly. We previously talked about some of the new Warhammer features on the gaming side. Now we're going to be talking about some of the optimization stuff, the technology. And before we get to that, this coverage from PAX East 2016 is brought to you by CyberPower, who make the Fanebook that we recently overclocked past 4 gigahertz. So, Al, what? What can we talk about immediately with regard to the engine? What's the most interesting thing to talk about with Total War? Um, well, I think uh, we could probably start with uh, yeah the engine optimizations that we've done. Essentially, our graphics programming team has taken quite a, a lot of time in the schedule this time around, months in fact, to work simply on optimizations and you know implement things in a more efficient way. So, one of the things we've done there is we've done we've got a, a much better um, set sense of load balancing across the different CPU cores in Warhammer than we've ever had before. So, for example, we used to have the game logic and the renderer running on the single thread, which right. you know kind of maxes out one core, maxes out one thread, leaving the other threads not really doing an awful lot. And we've, we've decoupled those, so information is passed from one thread to the other, from the game logic to the renderer. So now you're seeing a much more evenly balanced load across the, across the different CPU cores. So, and that's really helping just with general frame rates and, and the model update, which dictates you know how smoothly everything runs at right. a certain frame rate so so with the game logic thread and the render thread what are some things that each of those does what's the logic thread responsible for so the logic threads responsible for well for essentially for the game running for everything you see on screen so in a battle um, it, it's it's running the battle model which is uh, literally executing everything you're seeing so you know you give an order to something it's moving away you're seeing all the animations of the different units and they're clashing those calculations are done the AIs the AI is responding. That's all. That's all bound up in the game logic. So, um, in the battle model. So, um, and then it passes that information to the renderer, which then draws what you see on the screen. So, um, so yeah, having those separated is a big win, basically, sure. frame, frame rate wise. Yeah, and on the uh, on the GPU side, we were talking before. It sounds like you moved some of the particle effects to the GPU. Yeah, we've offloaded our particle simulations model to the GPU. That again, that used to be on the CPU, so that's yet more load off the CPU, making us less CPU bound than we've ever been. Um, so we've also optimised our task system as well, which is you know everything that's being executed by the CPU to further balance load across across the different cores. So once again, it's more of a win, less right. CPU bound, GPU's freed up to do its job better. So. Uh, what about some of the anti-aliasing techniques? Are you doing anything special there? Yeah, we've actually we've done a ton of optimization with MSAO. So our two, our two um, um, anti-aliasing solutions we've got in the game are MLAA and MSAA. So you know MLAA being a bit of a post-process hack right. almost. So um, you know it, it improves it improves the look and feel and doesn't hit the frame rate too badly. MSAA is much more much more frame rate intensive. So. What we've done there, we, we've made our solution a bit more kind of selective and a bit more intelligent about what it actually anti-aliases. So it looks at the whole scene, it looks for lit edges rather than rather than anti-aliasing every line, every line and every edge. It's just looking for lit edges which are going to be visible to the player. So um, and it selectively anti-aliases those. All of which adds up to less, you know, less hit on the frame rate. There'll still be some hit, of course. It's still, you know, it's still a fairly intensive operation, but much less than before. And we've got MSAA two, four, and eight times running. So. Right. Yeah, so it's not uh, not as abusive because it's just only anti-aliasing and aliasing the things that actually can be visibly seen. By exactly. The player, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you think of, of a you know a soldier standing side on and the edges are lit, that's right. where you're going to see the jaggies. So that's what it's working on, rather than absolutely everything. So. Sure. And uh, other future topics, of course, we'll eventually be able to talk about DirectX 12. Mm -hmm. You're working with AMD on that, right? Yeah, working very closely. We've worked. Um, we have got AMD engineers coming into our offices and helping helping the graphics team out with that. Um, so yeah, we'll be rolling that out when we're happy. The performance is great and it's nice and stable. So watch this space on that, I guess. Uh, one one final note here, just on the game itself. So remind everyone what's the launch date. Any uh, any major items you want to remind people of with Total War Warhammer? Yeah, so we're launching on May 24th, actually. Um, so yeah, not not as any month away now. Wow, <laughs> that's kind of scary. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would say get on our social media and look at look look at some of the videos we're putting out of gameplay at the moment. And um, yeah, it's just not like any other Total War game we've ever made, basically. <laughs> Very cool. So to see more about the fusion of Warhammer and Total War, links in the description below for more information. Thank you as always for the information. Right, good to see you. And we'll see you all next time.